Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Praxis Guild. This is a kind of a different setup for me today. Uh, the release of this video, we are in the midst of a COVID crisis and so we are all pretty much in lockdown mode. And so I wanted to change up the background a tiny bit to kind of not to be so somber and says I'm not trying to convey anything dark and sinister about all of this, but I, I did want to I did want to touch on the fact that uh, metaphorically speaks about what some of us are going through, and the topic of today's video is navigating through the storms and finding our bearings. So please stick through to the end because I have a few bonus things I want to share with you, and uh, we'll be talking about that at the end. So have you ever have you ever had a situation quite like what's going on right now where you've had trouble finding your bearings or you've had trouble staying focused on on what you need to do or even trying to figure out what you need to do. And it kind of reminds me of a story where, you know, in in essence there was this guy who was on a sailing boat with a bunch of other people and he uh, was listening to the conversation and there was quite a few of them on the boat. They decided to take a little meditation piece and so they all kind of closed their eyes and were enthralled in the meditation piece. And the guy piloting the boat also closed his eyes, which, you know, in hindsight wasn't the best thing he could do. And yet he did close his eyes and he followed along with the meditation. Well, what he found out when he opened his eyes after a few minutes of meditating with everybody was that they had swerved off course quite a bit and he had to make this huge course correction. And so this is not necessarily a, a, a kick against meditating. Uh, in fact, I, I believe in meditation and I, and I do practice it myself. But what it is uh, about is taking our eyes off of the end destination or where we're heading to and being distracted by all those things around us. We, we veer off course and you know, the metaphor is, is that if you veer off course by even one degree over a period of time, you will miss your target by miles uh, just because you are off one degree. And so it kind of speaks to that question of how do I find out if I'm going in the right direction? How do I get going in the right direction? And how do I stay in the right direction? And so in, in a, in a, in an earlier time, people sailed the seas without navigational instruments that we have today. All they had were maps, and sometimes they didn't have that. Other times they had the sun, the moon, and the stars. Maybe some landmarks if they were close enough to shore. But really, that, that's all they had. So they had to learn to keep their eyes um, focused on their environment. But also, as they were doing that, to keep the end goal in mind. And so how do we navigate with confidence when there are no natural landmarks or when the sky is cloudy and we can't see the sun, the moon, or the stars? How do we navigate with confidence? And so the turning point for us really comes to this idea in the sense that we need a system in place to help us get through the, the storm or to help us navigate this difficult piece of, of life. And that system will provide some structure for us and will help minimize, if not almost completely eliminate, the fear and anxiety that we have. And so I, I share that with you because there was a point for me in this last little while where I needed to come back to, I needed to have a reset on the idea of my own system and helping me to get through the stuff that I knew I needed to get done, but also making sure that I was staying on track with some stuff that needed to get done and not forgetting the end result or the end, the end goal. And so I, I want to share with you three different pieces here that go along with that system. And then be sure to stay stay tuned to the end because I have I have a, some bonus material that I want to share with you. And so, the the first one that I want to share with you is the idea of simplicity. And so, what I mean by simplicity is just this uh, this uh, concept of returning back to what we decided to do in the first place. You see, as people, we tend to uh, make make things more complicated than they need to be. 
And so my synonym for simplicity is focus. Uh, Dan Goldman uh, wrote a book called Focus, really great book. In fact, I may even do some Praxis notes on it later. Um, but he, he wrote this book to help us understand the importance of being focused. And, and in a nutshell, what that means is we begin shredding away things that bring too much choice into our life. When we have less choice, there's less opportunity for us to suffer what is called the analysis paralysis uh, syndrome, where when we have too much choices, it really stalls our productivity. It stalls our forward momentum because we spend too much time trying to make decisions. And so when we're able, when I'm able to become uh, more focused, it's usually because I've stripped away a lot of the nonsense and have gotten really simple on what I need to get done and, and try to get really down to earth on what I need to do. And so I drill down to the core of what I need to get done. And so there's some, there's some ideas around here in the sense of what's really important to me. And I keep asking myself that question, what's really important to me? And I, and I sometimes answer the question with why, why is that important to me? And I'll say that three or four times. Why is that thing important to me? Why am I driving myself towards that? The other thing that I want to offer to you in regards to trying to stay focused or keep things simple is to get rid of distractions. And I've noticed uh, specifically through this last week that I've become really distracted when I look at the Twitter feed and I'm trying to stay on top of what's happening nationally and globally with, with this uh, COVID virus issue. And I found that it was actually detracting me from being focused on the stuff that I needed to do, even if it was simply just helping people deal with their crisis. And it was really hindering me in, in providing care for others because I wasn't being able to care for myself. And I have, this, I have this conviction that if our well is empty, we won't have any water for others when they come with their buckets. Uh, Maslow would say that taking care of our own psychological safety and our own base needs is the number one, number one thing that we need to do all the time. And that's true. We have to understand that taking care of other people includes us. We have to take care of ourselves too. Because if we keep putting that off, we're just gonna, our well will get, uh, drier and drier and drier and then we won't have anything left for anybody else and we'll be in dire need of straits as well. The simplicity issue is, is, is really just that, taking care of the clutter, getting rid of all the extrenu extraneous stuff that's out there and just focusing on what really matters, what's essential. The next one that I wanted to share with you is this idea of visibility. And what do I mean by visibility? Visibility means accountability and that, that's my synonym for it. And really what this boils down for me is this this idea that there's a certain amount of stress called eustress and it's spelled e-u-s-t-r-e-s-s -S, eustress and eustress is actually a good form of stress it's that stress that keeps us moving forward uh, to get things done like deadline for instance provides a certain amount of eustress for us and that it motivates us to get stuff done it helps us to keep our feet moving and when we're, when we're keeping our feet moving, then we're moving in some direction. We're either moving forward or sideways. Sometimes we're moving backwards, but at least we're moving. And there's the old adage that it takes more energy to move a rock from being stationary to rolling than it does to keep the rock rolling in either direction. And that is true for that metaphor. And it's also true for our own lives that when we become so wrapped up in what's going on around us and we become so anxious and so fearful, we get this paralysis uh, syndrome because we have too many choices. It's harder to gain momentum. It's harder to get things moving. So keeping our feet moving is essential to what we're doing. Having a scoreboard for me really, really helps. And so what I mean by scoreboard is I will write down things uh, like goal posts or mile markers or smaller goals within the bigger goal to help me measure where I am in the process. And I'll keep that visible. This ties into the visibility piece. I'll keep that visible on my desk or on my desktop on my computer so that it's right in front of me so that I always know it's there and it's not there to guilt me. It's not there to punish me. It's not there to make me feel bad about not doing something for a certain day or a certain period of time. But in fact, it's actually there to help me get stuff done and to help me stay focused. The third thing that I wanted to share with you is the idea of clarity. 
And what I mean by this is having some pathways. You see, people need connections. People want to know where they're going. They also want to know why they're going. And they also want to know what to expect when they get there. It's kind of like crossing the road. They want to know where they're going to. And they know that they have to cross this space between where they are and where they need to be. And they know for the most part that it's going to be a safe distance because we all know that in most cases, you know, crosswalks are safe for people to walk in. We understand that. But when it comes to achieving what we need to achieve or even just surviving the day, we want to make sure that we know where we're going and how we're going to get there. And so this traceability for me means having a pathway where there, there, there needs to be a spot where I can connect myself to not only now, but in the future. And I'm not talking like a month or six months or a year down the road. I'm actually just talking like in the next hour or even in the next day, at most the next week. Because in a crisis situation, we don't want to think too far down the road. We want to take care of our stuff during the moment. We also want to take care of our stuff in the short term, like one or two days. And then really the long term in a crisis is just a week. And if that's what it takes to get us through this, then that's what it takes. But it's those small incremental movements from point A to point B that we begin being able to trace back and say to ourselves, you know what, this is actually providing a lot of clarity for me because I can I can manage these small steps and I can actually look back over a short period of time and see where I've moved from point A to point B. And so we need to start connecting what we're doing with the vision that we want to achieve. And so again, that that vision, I I don't want it to be this thing that we're looking at, you know, six months or a year from now. It could even just be tomorrow. What do I want to accomplish tomorrow? What are two or three things that I want to make sure I do tomorrow? What, What can I do tomorrow to even be friendly to people? What can I do tomorrow to make somebody else's day really, really better than what it was yesterday? You need to ask yourself, what am I going to do? How am I going to manifest that to other people? And so that brings some clarity and some instantaneousness to what we're doing. So if you've made it this far, thank you. I I got a couple of bonus things that I want to share with you uh, to help us kind of in this idea of navigating through the storm. And, and these are, these are two extra things that I remind myself of sometimes daily, maybe even sometimes hourly. And it, it really comes in the metaphor of a target that I, I used to do a lot of uh, bow uh, exercise. I used to shoot a lot of arrows. I was into archery. And, um, and so what I would do is I would, I would practice obviously. And, and obviously the target was always the middle of the target. I was always trying to get a bullseye. And so what I wanted to share with you today is this idea of that target. And you'll see by the illustration here that there's an outside area of the target and there's an inside area of the target. And what I wanted to make sure that we understood here is that there's, there's an outside part here where I, I often call the area of no worries or the area of knowledge in the sense that I know it's on the outer ring or the other, the two outer rings, but it hasn't hasn't come into my sphere of influence yet. It hasn't come into my area of control yet. And in fact, that's what I call this area here. And that center part of the target is that area which I can control. And when things are out in the outer circle, I I know that they're there. Uh, I know that they may be coming closer to me. They may not, but I know that they may come close to me. But when it comes to looking after myself in navigating the storm and navigating the stuff that we're going through, it's really these two inner circles that I'm most concerned about. Am I clear? Uh, am I am I providing traceability? Am I am I providing myself some some clarity? And so in in regards to this idea of having control, it's these two rings that I really want to have control over. Because the other stuff and like even in the red circles and in the blue circles, I have no control over those things. So I ask myself, what can I control? It's really only those two inner rings that I can control because that's that's my inner circles of influence. And so I really focus on getting those things straight and not so I can branch out into the other rings, but so that I'm ready when that other stuff from the outside comes in and brushes up against me. You see, I often tell people, you, you need to think through crises before they come upon you because when they do come upon you, you've worked some of this stuff out. And I'm not saying that any of us should have figured out this whole COVID crisis yet. I, I, that's not what I'm saying. But this this 
principle applies to a lot of different things in our life. If we think about and prepare for things early on, when they do happen, if they do happen, we're that much more ready for it. And so I hope I hope these things help. And uh, if they do, awesome. Uh, if there's a different kind of coping mechanism that you use or, or managing system that you use, please leave it below in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe. Hit that like button and smash that bell uh, because I'll be up uploading more videos uh, in the coming weeks, one, maybe two a week. And uh, you want to make sure that you get notified every time I do that. Thanks again for taking the time. Appreciate it. And don't forget to take care of yourself as you're taking care of others. Mm -hmm.